Howie Houston. Uh, you stand by, Pauly. Pauly, could you stand by? We'll try to get you a better antenna. You're just about unreadable. All right. Pauly, Houston, we're right in between uh, antennas. And if you could wait about five minutes for your message, we should have better comments. That was uh, Jim Lovell who tagged that one he, with the uh, statement, it sure is uh, a shame when the CMP, the, the commander, the command module pilot, can't see where he's going. That's a reference to the old navigator joke. I'm the navigator and I have a right to know. Please tell me. So, uh, we're in... Uh, all in all, in good shape at 102 hours, 40 minutes into the flight. This is Apollo Control at Houston. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead. Roger, we copy uh, Jim doing a P-52, and I'm standing by with a maneuver pad for mid-course 5, uh, anytime at your convenience. Okay, ready to copy, Mike. Roger, Jim. This is uh, mid-course maneuver number five, and it's an RCS slash GNN, and it's three one seven zero zero. Not applicable. Not applicable. Are you with me? With you. Good. One zero three. Five niner five two eight six minus zero 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 five zero plus all zeros plus zero 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 one zero 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 Three, three, four, zero, zero, one, five, zero, 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 plus zero, zero, one, niner, zero, 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 five, zero, zero, one, four, Zero, 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 five, zero. Are you still with me, Or? Still with you. 
Still with you. Good. Four, one, three, zero, two, zero. One, eight, three. Shala. Down, zero, six, four. Left, zero, six. Plus, zero, seven, four, seven. Minus, one, six, four, one, zero. One, two, Niner, eight, eight. Three, six, three, zero, one. One, four, six, four, six, four, zero. North set of stars, Sirius and Rigel. Roll, three, zero, eight. Pitch, two, zero, niner. Yaw, three, five, seven. Remarks. Use high speed procedure with minus M A. Over. Roger Houston, MCC five, RCS, G and M. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you, Jim. Three one seven zero zero N A N A one zero three five nine five two eight six minus zero 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 five zero plus all zeros plus zero 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 one zero 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 three three four zero zero one all zeros plus zero zero one nine zero 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 five zero zero one four zero 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 five zero four one three zero two zero one eight three Shala down zero six four left zero six plus zero seven four seven minus one six four one zero one two nine eight eight three six three zero one one four six four six four zero Sirius Rigel, 308-209-357. Use high-speed procedure with minus MA. Roger, and could you go to accept, please? And uh, we're going to send you a P-27 load consisting of a LEM state vector and the target load for MCC-5. Roger. Apollo 8, Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston, Apollo 8. Roger, we'd like to dump your wastewater tank down to 25%. We'd like to do it before the mid-course for tracking reasons. So if it's convenient with you, if you start right now, we'll uh, dump run down to 25. Roger, we'll get right with it. Thank you. Apollo 8, Houston. Roger, we got those loads in and verified. They can go back to block at your computer. And George Lowe says he's uh, working on that window problem. It's six for spacecraft 104. You just happen to have the wrong spacecraft. That's the wrong statement. We got the right spacecraft. Our clue is it keeps going this way for two more days. We have got not only the right spacecraft, we've got the best spacecraft. It'll keep going. Apollo 8 is starting the dump now, uh, Houston. Apollo 8, Houston, over. Yeah, we're starting the wastewater dump now. Okay, Bill, thank you. That's a blizzard. Roger, understand. 
Go ahead, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, I need a pop uh, Romeo dog on all three. And a status report on uh, the LMP. This is Apollo Control, Houston, 103 hours, 7 minutes into the flight. Apollo 8 is 169,750 miles from home. It's moving at a velocity of 4,264 feet per second. 4,264 feet per second. If you multiply by 0.68, you get miles per hour. In uh, the last 15 minutes, we've had a good deal of conversation with the, cu with the crew, and in the course of it, uh, Frank Borman makes a comment, a reference about the windows. He says they're really a shame. We discussed them yesterday, and uh, the message was immediately relayed to George Lowe, who, uh, and in the course of the ensuing discussion, 
Uh, Mike Collins suggests that perhaps the crew, this crew, should have had spacecraft 104, which is the next one down, uh, down the line. And uh, Borman insists, no, no, he had the right spacecraft. And uh, it's a most interesting conversation. Here's how it goes. Uh, here's to Apollo 8. Apollo 8, Houston, over. Uh, just for information, with the uh, perigee reading at uh, 42 B, such a big minus number for such a small bird, we're reading uh, minus 0-3-1-3-7 now. I uh, understand now 42 Parity reads minus zero three one three seven. Roger, we're going through program 30 after you uh, gave us the target load. And, uh, I didn't think there'd be that much of a change for such a small bird. Uh, Roger, uh, stand by, check in, did you? All the way, Houston, North. Roger, Frank, we don't uh, think there's any Damn problems low. or any uh, funnies in this uh, perigee prediction of uh, minus 03137. It's a Keplerian prediction, and it's not very accurate. Now, we've taken uh, your vector from the downlink and uh, run it through a, uh, a make-believe external delta V maneuver down here, and we get precisely the uh, correct answer, Or. Roger, understand that you think it's just because of the, the conic solution that comes up? That's, that's affirmative. The, uh, the Kepler solution is, uh, is just pretty gross. Okay, I'm just kind of curious. I, I can see differences when we were talking about LOI burns. Uh, this means it's a short one. I thought it would be that much different. I understand. Uh, Mike, this is Frank. Go ahead. Y'all are monitoring our See if we get any inadvertent engine firing all the time, aren't you? Well, we, we can't tell uh, when you're in low bit rate. We're in high bit rate. Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah, we crank up high bit rate just have you take a check out and look, look at them. Okay. All right, Houston. Roger, since you're on Omni D dog at this time, we're sort of 180 out of phase for the high gain. As soon as uh, we can get high gain uh, locked, then we'll, uh, with our high bit rate, be looking at those uh, or looking for any thruster firings, but we can't do it until then, over. Okay, Roger, we'll take the antennas and uh, get on the high gate as soon as we can. Thank you. And this is Apollo Control Houston. That catches us up, catches us up to 100 and uh, at 103 hours 21 minutes. We are now about 40 minutes, so uh, 45 minutes away from a uh, 40 minutes away from the burn. A mid-course correction of five feet per second. The spacecraft will have, have its nose pointed at Scorpio. I do not know exactly what angle that'll be in along its its path of flight, but it uh, apparently will not be in the direct line of flight. It'll be a slight adjustment kind of burn to uh, have the effect to move the spacecraft more to the center of a 35-mile corridor keyhole. Uh, which through which the spacecraft will enter the atmosphere in its uh, in its final splashdown maneuver. At 103 hours 22 minutes into the flight, this is Apollo Control at Houston. We've done some more checking, and we confirm that that is the correct Keplerian prediction 
On noun 42, minus uh, 03137, just like you said. Thank you. Apollo 8, Houston. Roger, we're going to be doing a ranging sequence. If uh, we could eliminate voice for a couple minutes, we'd appreciate it. Roger, we will. For a change. Follow A. Houston, over. Roger, our ranging's complete, and we've been monitoring uh, your thruster firings, and they show uh, what appears to be very normal DAP activity. Over. Thank you. Okay. I guess it was associated with the water vent. Roger, I understand, thank you. This is Apollo Control Houston at 103 hours 45 minutes into the flight. In the last few minutes, we've been looking at the biomed data. The harness is switched to Jim Lovell, and his mean heart rate is 57. The high during the sample period was 59, the low is 54. His respiration rate is 13. Jim and uh, Bill Anders are shortly to have Christmas dinner just after this mid-course correction, which is to come at 104 hours into the flight. A five foot per second burn that'll have the effect of uh, ensuring the spacecraft hits more nearly the center of our entry corridor rather than the high side of it. We have some tape conversation backed up here. We'll play it now. And this is Apollo Control Houston. 103 hours, 47 minutes into the flight. We'll be back up with the burn in about um, 12 minutes. Apollo 8, Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston, Apollo 8. All right, Frank, uh, we got about two and a half minutes to ignition, and uh, we're still showing some of your SCS switches uh, not uh, set up as per checklist, uh, specifically uh, rate low, uh, dead band minimum, and uh, your BMAG modes and attitude one rate two. Okay, thank you. And your manu manual attitude switches in rate command. All right. Apollo 8, uh, Houston, Mark. Uh, one minute to ignition, over. Roger, we concur. This is Apollo Control, Houston, 103 hours, 59 minutes into the flight, and Mike Collins has given the crew a standby for their mid-course. Mark, 20 seconds to ignition. 20 seconds to ignition for a burn that, in which the nose will be pointed at a 90-degree angle away, uh, 90 degrees away from a radius vector running out from the center of the earth and uh, we'll try to describe the position of the spacecraft a bit more at the change of shift briefing it's uh, it's just a very difficult thing to visualize with the several bodies the present weight is 31,678 Pounds. We're 167,548 miles from home. 
By the way, that quad A was temperature we reported earlier up to 86 is now down to 82. His pitch attitude is 334 degrees. He's yawed 1.1 degrees. He's got 0 0.7 degrees in roll. Apparently he's all set up now and got the angles he wants. Go ahead, Jim. We burned on time, 14 seconds, attitude nominal. Uh, residuals were uh, plus two. And, and Jim Lowell now is reporting that uh, the burn went off on time. The duration of the burn was 14 seconds. Stopped about 6.2. And uh, we're trying to check now and find out exactly how many feet per second we got. All right, understand uh, 14 seconds, burn on time, nominal attitude, 2 tenths X, 1 tenth Y, uh, nothing minus 1 tenth Y, and nothing Z. And you put 6.2 on EMS now, and then uh, continued to count after the burn. Is that affirmative? Uh, filling in his post-burn report. Let's... Uh, uh, no, we put uh, the burn... Uh, Let's pick up this conversation, go back and from the start of the burn, pick up the conversation up to now. Back, understand. Understand. Okay, Houston, we transferred the state uh, picture over to the lunch slot. Roger, Jim, thank you. And uh, I still don't understand you on this EMS. Uh, it counted down from five to zero normally and then continued uh, through zero in a negative way, and now it's reading minus 6.2. Is that affirmative? Right, that's right. It was, well, it was, it was counting up, but we shut it off. Uh, last time I saw it was 6.9. Now, Frank just uh, went on uh, to auto again with the Delta V uh, function switch in, in uh, Delta V, and it uh, jumped uh, six tenths. Then he tried it a second time, and it stayed at zero. So we really don't know what the story is. Roger, I understand you. And that brings us up to the live, uh, up to the present. 104 hours, 5 minutes. And 10 minutes from now, should start our uh, television. Acquisition. Uh, Houston, this is Apollo 8. Let's go back. Now. Go ahead, Frank. Take them on. I guess you want us to resume PTC, right? Stand by. A reminder to the press in uh, the Building 1 auditorium oh, area, yeah. the big Ida 4 will be available for the television pass. Go ahead. So we'd like you to resume the PTC attitude pitch zero one zero yaw zero four five and uh, then come out of it again for your uh, P23s which are scheduled uh, for about another hour and ten minutes over in another hour and ten minutes. Roger. Now, Mike, this is Frank. Is this TV still scheduled for uh, 104.15? Uh, that's affirmative, Frank, if you can manage it. Okay. How's it going with the TV, Frank? Are we, uh, can the networks count on having it on schedule over? Yeah, we can have it on schedule. We don't have much to do, but we'll uh, perform for you. Okay, we got a bunch of filter experts standing by if you need any advice. Well, uh, we're going to have to just do it inside today because uh, there's no good shots of the moon and the earth to available now. The sun is too dark, right? Yeah, I think it's raining out there. Yeah, we, that's what we thought. Well, a 
until we get acquisition or, or until we get closer to the time six or seven minutes away uh, we'll just get off the line right now and come back up then our present distance 167,187 velocity in relation to the earth 4,304 feet per second our weight is now 31,679 pounds at 104 hours nine minutes into the flight this is Apollo Control Houston This is Apollo Control, Houston, 104 hours, 14 minutes. We um, do not have a picture as yet. We're not particularly trying hard, but we do expect it within 45 seconds. Earlier, Frank Borman said uh, only that he'd probably have to keep the camera inside today. He made some offhanded reference to the fact that it was raining outside. The... Uh, flight plan shows two crew members Jim Lovell and Bill Anders would be in an eating period eating their Christmas dinner perhaps we'll see them performing that little chore and uh, also Frank Borman is to uh, to be having Christmas dinner And immediately after dinner, Frank will, uh, like so many other people, after their Christmas dinners down here on Earth, take a long nap. Frank's is to extend for about seven hours. from our Goldstone station we're having a little trouble acquiring the spacecraft today just momentarily a momentary delay we hope hundred and four hours fifteen minutes any lapse time spacecraft in about four or five minutes. Our ECOM, the uh, communications officer here on the console, advises we are not yet locked up on the high gain antenna and we'll certainly have to do that in order to receive a television signal. In relation to the Earth, the spacecraft is uh, directly above the heart of South America over 60 degrees west longitude and uh, about 5 degrees south latitude.
Flight director advises it'll be several more minutes before we get the high gain antenna locked up. We have some a small amount of tape backed up to this point. Suppose we uh, move that now. Now this was recorded about five, five to seven minutes ago. Could we have that tape, please? Houston, Apollo 8. Apollo 8, Houston, go ahead. Roger, uh, on this EMS, uh, when I put in Delta V, and it's reading zero, and then I switch it to auto, mm -hmm. sometimes it'll count to 19 or 20 feet per second. I guess that's what happens. Roger, uh, understand uh, when you put it to auto, it, uh, it maybe it'll keep counting up as much as 19, 20 feet per second. Just when you put it to auto, it'll start counting on some occasions. I understand. And that concludes our uh, recorded conversation. We're back now to live waiting. present velocity is our present distance from Earth is 166,743 miles. We're moving at a, a velocity of 4,311 feet per second. It's constant. It's a constantly increasing value. Present weight of the spacecraft is uh, 31,679 pounds. We're standing by waiting for the high gain antenna to lock up with our Goldstone antenna. And hopefully the antenna, the big antenna in Madrid as well. And now our communications officer advises he's about, the spacecraft's about three degrees from uh, establishing lock. And we ought to just get a picture any second now. picture of the control center. Perhaps they can observe the Christmas tree down in front of the consoles between uh, what we call the front trench and the wall displays. Now, Mike, we're ready when you are. Now, Borman says, Mike, we're ready when you are. We're ready. And we're certainly ready. Say again? Yeah, we're ready, Frank. We're all uh, squared away and eagerly standing by.
Uh, we don't seem to have much luck today, but uh, don't call for a repairman yet. It may be our camera here. We're understanding that uh, the onboard camera takes a minute and a half, two minutes to warm up. At least that's the word of the communications officer. Uh, negative, Frank. Uh, it may be that it hasn't warmed up properly. Okay, we've had it on for a while. Are you getting our FM okay? Okay, Frank, there we we got it. Uh, it's coming in uh, loud and clear. We looks like we're uh, looking at your hatch and now the MDC. Okay, well, good afternoon. Uh, this is the Apollo 8 crew. And how's it focusing now, Houston? It's uh, it's looking good. You can hold the thing still. Uh, there's sort of a time delay. Uh, any motion at all uh, ruins our picture. Tell me if there's any difference in the speed of the sound. That's yeah, looking good now. Okay, fine. It looks like uh, you're okay, but somebody else is upside down. Okay, that's right. That's Jim Lovell. What we thought we'd do today was just show you a little bit about life inside Apollo 8. We've shown you the scenes of the moon, scenes of the earth, and uh, we thought we'd invite you into our, our home. It's been our home at least for uh, four days. You can see on the, de the uh, instrument panel, we, uh, we mark off each day on the, uh, on the instrument panel. We pour down and we're working on the fifth day. Of course, we're all looking forward to the uh, landing on Friday. Now, down here in the part of the spacecraft that we call the lower equipment bay, we have the president's advisor on physical fitness, Captain Jim Lovell, about to uh, undergo an exercise program that we, uh, we do every day. You notice that uh, he floats around very freely bump his head on the optics of our navigating. He's working with an exercise device that's designed to keep the muscles in shape. Now, another very important function of our spacecraft is the computer. And I thought you might be interested in seeing what we have here the displays that gives us all the information about our burns, about navigating, and about the velocity that we use during entry and uh, retrofar on Earth orbital mission. You can see it's controlled by a disky or similar to a uh, typewriter keyboard, and the things that go in and out of that are absolutely miraculous. It's done a fantastic job for us, and uh, Jim Lovell's done an excellent job operating it. Now, then, another very important thing, whether you're in space or on the ground, is eating. And I've asked Bill Anders to show you how we eat up here in the flight. Pardon the picture while we move around here and change cameras. The food that we use is all dehydrated. It comes prepackaged in vacuum-sealed bags. You notice that all Bill has to do to keep it in one place is let go of it, except for the air currents in the spacecraft that would stay perfectly still. He gets out his handy daddy scissors and cuts the bag. pretty good. That doesn't sound like a rousing endorsement. It isn't, but it's nevertheless uh, pretty good food. You can see that Bill is very clever. He does things swiftly. Actually, those 
food bags are stuck together because they've been vacuum packed so tightly. What do you have today, Bill, for uh, dinner? Well, here we have some cocoa, which will be good. I'll be adding about five ounces of hot water to that. These are little uh, sugar cookies. Some orange juice. Corn chowder. Chicken and gravy. Add a little napkin to wipe your hands when you're done. I'll prepare some orange juice here. Okay, uh, you can see that he's taking his scissors and cutting the plastic end off of a little a little nozzle that he's going to insert the water gun into. The water gun dispenses half ounce bursts of water per click. I hope that you all had better Christmas dinners today than this, but uh, nevertheless, we thought you might be interested in how we eat. I haven't heard any complaints around here, Frank. We, uh, we'll bring you up to speed on your food when you get back. Very good. Looks like a happy home you got Ordinarily up there. Ordinarily, we let these drinks... Ordinarily, we let these uh, drinks uh, settle for five or ten minutes, but Bill's going to eat one right and drink it right now to get on with the program. He cuts open another flap, and you'll see a little tube comes out. This is not a commercial. Down in this area, it's called the LAB or the Lower Equipment Bay, and we have our optics uh, positioning equipment right here. We do all our navigation down here by sighting on stars and on the horizons of either the moon or the Earth. And this is where we find out exactly where we are in space, what direction and how fast we're traveling. And our computer, as uh, Frank had mentioned, that takes the information and tells us how to maneuver to get home safely. I work with the scanning telescope and the sextant, and occasionally if I get too busy, I just sort of float out of, out of sight. 
and go up into the tunnel, which is the tunnel to the hatch, the lunar module, which we don't have on board, of course. Well, that's about all we have for today. I, uh, each and uh, every one of us would each, wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas. And we, uh, I guess we'll see you tomorrow, and we'll be landing uh, early Friday morning. Merry Christmas from Apollo 8. Now, Roger, uh, Merry Christmas from the ground, Apollo 8, and thank you very much for the guided tour. We really enjoyed it. And at, this is Apollo Control. Uh, we started receiving pictures at uh, 104 hours, 24 minutes. And the, uh, we saw the wind up at 104 hours, 33 minutes, 55 seconds. This is Apollo Control at Houston. Go ahead, Frank. How soon will they tell us uh, what effect that mid course had on our trajectory, Mike? Oh, the longer we track, the smarter we'll get, but stand by one uh, for a preliminary answer. Tentatively, your mid-course correction at 122 hours is zero, and in about an hour and a half, we'll have some track data to confirm that, over. Okay, thank you. Christmas? No, I'm missing enough with the one I have. That's what Edwin told me. I thought maybe you wouldn't try another one. Um, Was it 40 shots and four birds? Oh, negative, Frank. I'm 100%. Uh, one bird per box. Jim, glad to hear it. Yeah, we're down here eating cold coffee and bologna sandwiches. Apollo Control, Houston here, 104 hours, 59 minutes into the flight. And in between courses of the Christmas dinner, we've recorded this conversation. Houston, over. Roger, 
Yes, and we've got an awful lot of these stars to uh, mark on now, Mike, and we were they were having some concern about the PTC. Will you let us know if we stay in one position too long or if we have to knock off and uh, do some PTC? Will do, Frank. Thank you. Apollo 8 Houston, we're monitoring your temperatures. The uh, quads all look good. We'll continue to do so. We expect uh, no difficulty with them during the P-23 work. Thank you. Our highest tank temperature now is C. understand the Seas Island. This is Apollo Control, Houston, 105 hours, 26 minutes into the flight. A few minutes ago, Frank Mormon told us that uh, they had another number of navigational checks to make and their attitude might consequently put certain quads in the sun for an overlong time. As a result, he asked us to keep an eye keep an eye on the temperatures. Here's how the conversation went. And our present uh, distance from Earth is 163,838 nautical miles. Velocity 4,360 feet per second. Current weight 31,679 pounds. At 105 hours, 28 minutes into the flight, that's our status.